Filters in ASP.NET Core allow code to be run before or after specific stages in the request processing pipeline. There are built-in filters like the ones used for authorization, response caching, etc. You can also write custom filters for handling cross-cutting concerns like configuration, logging, exception handling, etc. In this video, let's learn more about filters in ASP.NET Core, how it works, how it's set up, and how to write a custom filter from scratch. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos around .NET, Cloud and DevOps. If this is of interest to you, please make sure to subscribe this channel. It definitely helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Without much delay, let's dive straight into ASP.NET Core filters. Filters run within the ASP.NET Core Action Invocation Pipeline, sometimes also referred to as the Filter Pipeline. The filter pipeline runs after the ASP.NET Core selects the action to execute. Looking here at the high level request pipeline, you can see there is a request coming in where the other middlewares gets executed first and then the routing middleware followed by choosing the action. Once the action is selected, it heads off into the filter pipeline. This is where the various filters gets executed. So usually there is code that gets executed before the action and also after the action as part of the filter pipeline. Let's look at this by setting up a new application and creating some custom filters. Let's head off to my console and start creating a new ASP.NET Web API application. So let's use the .NET CLI, specify new and specify Web API to create a new Web API in the current folder. This creates a new application using the .NET CLI. Let's use rider as the IDE in this example and specify dot to open the current folder along with the project inside it. I have the project opened in rider. You can see the project and you can see the normal files which are the program.cs, the startup.cs and also the controller which is the weather forecast controller. This is the default structure that comes as part of the template that we used. Let's create a new class and call this my sample action filter. So this is going to be the custom filter that we are going to create. To create a custom filter, we need to implement an interface. In this case, since this is an action filter, let's use I action filter. So there are two methods as part of this interface that needs to be implemented. So that is the on action executing and the on action executed. So let's add these implementations and start writing the code for that. To understand the request pipeline and how it works, Let's start writing console statements within these functions. So this will help us to log it and see how it's getting executed. So let's remove this and say console.writeLine and specify the action name itself. So in this case, I will specify on action executing. Similarly, let's copy this and replace this method to say on action executed. To register this filter in the ASP.NET Core pipeline, let's head off into the startup.cs class. We can set up the filter under the configure services method. This is where the dependency injection and all the ASP.NET Core related services are set up. I had done a complete different video on how this works and how this setup is done. Make sure to check that out if you are new to it. The add controllers method also has an overloaded function which takes in an MVC options as a parameter. So let's use that to configure the ASP.NET Core filter pipeline. So let's take in an options parameter and specify the delegate function inside here. We can use the options and specify the filters.add method to add a new filter inside here. So let's specify new my sample action filter in this case because this is the filter that we just created. This adds the sample action filter into the ASP.NET request pipeline. Let's run this application and see this filter in action. The application is running and it has hit the Swagger endpoint which is configured by default in the template. We can go into the get method and try this method out. So let's click execute. Now this is going to execute this specific endpoint to get the weather forecast and it has returned some dummy data. If we go back to Rider and look at the console statements here, we can see this has now logged the on action executing and also the on action executed. So our filter has got successfully invoked when we called the get method. If you're new to this template, that method called the weather forecast controller and the get endpoint on this. 
So here there is a bunch of random data getting generated, which is why we saw the weather data respond. The filter we added under the startup.cs using the options.filters is specified at a global level. This means this filter is applied to any endpoint under this application. To create a new controller, let's head off into the weather forecast controller, copy this and duplicate it right on top. So let's call this as user controller because this could be the data that is getting returned for a specific user. So let's name this user and add in a get method. So let's say public string get and simply return a hello world. Now this is a simple get method which returns the hello world string. Before we run this application, let me go to the startup.cs and turn off the swagger endpoint. You can do that by going under the configure method and commenting out this code. The reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want to be navigating through the Swagger UI and clicking the appropriate execute buttons to run this API. To change the default landing page, we also can go into the properties and update the launch settings.json file. So here you can see the launch URL is Swagger. So let's make this weather forecast, which is the default API endpoint. Let's also make sure to change the other profile, which is part of this settings file. So let's save and run this application to see this in action. The application is running and it has directly invoked the weather forecast API and returned back the data. If I navigate back into Rider, I can see the on action executing and the executed as before. So let's switch back and also call the user endpoint, which is at slash user. Now this returns the hello world message. So switching back to Rider, I can see the on action executing and executed is called once more. This is why this filter is currently applied at the global level. Any action endpoint that you execute, this filter is also going to execute in that pipeline. Filters can also be applied specifically for a controller or even at an action method level. These are usually done by using attributes. So let's see how we can do that. Now let's stop running this. Let's navigate back to the my sample action filter. To use this filter as an attribute, we need to inherit this class from the class attribute. This is the common convention in .NET programming. So now this makes it possible to use this as an attribute. For demo purposes, let's simply take in a string parameter so that we can use this to identify where this filter attribute is getting used. So let's say string name and make sure to add a backing property for this. Now we can start using this inside the console.write line statements. So let's use string interpolation and pass in the name inside of here. So let's say on executing and pass in the name. Similarly, we can do that for this console right line statement as well. So this is going to call on executed the name and also the on executing name. Normally attributes in .NET ends with the name attribute. So let's rename this class to name this as my action filter attribute and click next. Now this has updated all the attribute references. Let's navigate to the startup.cs class and comment out this global level filter. Now to apply this at the controller level, let's navigate to the weather forecast controller and right above the class name, we can apply this attribute. So let's specify my sample action filter and pass in a name for this. So in this case, let's use controller. Now, if you run this application, this is going to again run it as before. But the only difference is this is going to happen only at this controller level. So the default weather forecast endpoint is executed. So let's navigate back to Rider and we can see the on action executing and executing getting called. And it's also logging out that it's from the controller. Now, if we switch back and execute the user endpoint, this doesn't log this filter anymore because the filter is currently applied at the controller level. Similarly, you can also apply this action filter just at the get method level. So you can remove that from there and specify it here. And we can specify this is at the action level. Now the parameter is just for demo purposes. It could be anything else that's used inside your application. Now in this case, if there are other methods inside this controller, it will get invoked only for the get action method because we have applied it only at that method level. The action filter that we just added is a synchronous action filter. This is the reason why it has an on action executing and also an on action executed method. We can also make this into an asynchronous filter by using an iAsyncAction filter interface. Let's see an example for that. 
So let's go to the solution explorer and create a new class. Let's call this my sample async action filter. Now, as I said, we need to implement the I async action filter interface for this case. Let's implement the interfaces. And this now has only one method, which is the on action executing async. This has two parameters, which takes in the action executing context, which is the context in which this is getting executed, and also the next delegate. Now this is the next action in this pipeline that needs to get executed. This is very similar to the middleware pipeline if you are familiar with it. If not, please check out the video linked here to understand more about middleware and how that request pipeline works. To implement this attribute, very similar to the other one, let's take in the constructor, take in the name, use this as a field, and we can now wrap around this next delegate execution. Now inside the implementation, we can call the next method, which will automatically invoke the next filter in this pipeline. So let's call await and specify next. So this is going to call the next action method. Let's make sure to specify the async on this method because there is an await call. To simulate the before and after, the only thing we need to do now is to call that before and after executing that method. So in this case, right before calling the next, we can specify console.writeLine and say before async execution. Also make sure to pass in the name as a string interpolation. So let's specify underscore name. And we can call this after the await.next call as well. And name this as after async execution. If we need to use this as an attribute, let's also inherit from the attribute class in here. And let's make sure to name this as my sample async action filter attribute. To start using this attribute, let's switch to the weather forecast controller and update this to use my async action filter. Let's run this to see this in action. The application is running, so let's switch back to Rider. And here we can see this is now calling the before async execution action and the after async execution action. So as expected, it's calling the before and after, which is wrapping around the next call. Now that we have seen the asynchronous and synchronous version of the filters, let's look at the order of execution of these filters. Until now, we just had one custom filter added extra. So let's start adding multiple action filters and see what happens in that case. As we saw earlier, if we have multiple filters, they are going to get stacked inside the filter pipeline. So similar to the middlewares, this filters is also going to have a before and after call. So each of these filter is going to wrap around each other, which means the one on the top is going to wrap around the one on bottom and so on. Let's see this in action. So switching back to our code, it's easy to add multiple filters. So let's simply repurpose this action filter attribute, specify it at the controller level. So in this case, let's specify for this controller, rename this as controller, so we know where exactly this is getting used and also navigate back to the startup.cs class and uncomment this at the global level. So we can specify global in this case. Now this is using the sample action filter and not the async version, but both should behave the same in this pipeline. With these set up, let's run the application to see how this gets executed. The application is running, so let's switch back to Rider. And here we can see now there are multiple statements getting logged. So as we expected, initially the global scoped filter is getting called, which is the on action executing part of that. Right after that, the next action filter gets executed. Again, the before method of it. So since that is the async variant, there is a before async execution console line. And this specifies that it is from the controller scope. Since we also specified one at the action scope, the before async execution for the action is getting executed. Right after this point, we have the action code getting executed. In this case, it returns the weather forecast responses. After that, on the way back, it starts executing the after part of the action filters. So here, we have the after of the action getting executed first, because that's what it sees on its way back as the first filter attribute. Right after that, it calls the execution from the controller and ends with the global level. So you can see each of these scopes wraps around the one that's below it. The default order in this case is that the global gets executed first on the way down and it gets executed last on the way up. Regardless of whether it's an asynchronous attribute or a synchronous attribute, it follows the same pipeline. We can override this default order of execution by implementing another interface. So let's go to the sample action filter 
which is the synchronous version of the filter and implement the I ordered filter interface. Now this has one property which is the order. So we can specify the order of execution by specifying this int order property. So let's make this as a set variable and set this again from the constructor. So let's pass in the order that we want. So let's say order. By default, the order is always getting set to zero. So let's make this a default variable with zero as the value. So let's set order and specify the order from the constructor. Let's navigate back to startup.cs and we can optionally update this order if we want. Now if you don't do anything, it's going to maintain the same order as before. Lower the value of this order, the higher the execution it gets. So if this is a negative number, then that's going to get executed first. So in this case, since by default zero is applied for all orders, if we want to make this the last, let's give this a positive value. So if we update this and specify as one, then this is going to get executed last. So let's run this. The application is running. So let's switch back to Rider. Now here we can see the first filter that gets executed is the one from the controller, followed by the action. Since we overrode the order for the global attribute and gave it as one, this is getting executed last. So remember, the lesser the value, the higher it becomes in the filter chain. So if this is a negative number, in that case, global would have got executed first. So right after executing the two global, it continues back with the action and then the controller again. Let's stop this and see another example with a negative number. Let's remove this one, specify it as default so that it executes in the default request scope. Let's navigate to the weather forecast controller. Instead of the async variation, let's use the synchronous variation because that's where I have specified the order and pass in a negative value here. So let's specify minus 10. And now this is going to execute it as the first filter. So let's run this and see this in action. The endpoint is executed. So let's switch back to Rider. And here we can see the on action executing of the action getting called first. This is because we had specified a minus 10 as the value of the order. So the lesser the number, the higher it gets in the chain of execution. So right after executing action, it follows the default scope order because all the other filters have a value of zero for their order. So then it executes global and then controller. And on the way back, it again calls the controller, global, and finally it calls the action, which is wrapping around at the highest level. If two filters have the same order, then the scope is used to determine which one comes first. That is what we see the controller and the global getting executed in the same order as we expect, because both of them have the value zero. I hope this helps you to understand about filters in ASP.NET Core how to create a custom filter and how to set up inside the request pipeline. I will do a follow-up video on filters showing how to use dependency injection and also the inbuilt filters that is there as part of ASP.NET Core. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to drop in the comments below. I will make sure to reply to each one of you. Thank you and see you soon.